once in a while you come across something that is rather special and that somehow resonates well with you. I was at a pen meet uh, here in the Durham region and my friend Claudia brought a pen and I said, what's that? And she said, oh, that's made by my friend in the US. Um, I immediately loved it. Sometimes that happens. You see a pen or a product and you just really love it. So I asked for the contact information of this friend and I contacted him. Now, this is a private person who happens to make pens as a hobby, who's a pen enthusiast. He has no web shop. If you want this, you have to contact him. Joseph is his name. His Instagram account is penprike. I'll put a link in the description of the video. And he makes pens out of micarta. Now, micarta, slightly complicated, uh, uh, resin, cotton fiber, paper, extremely high pressure, gets compressed, turns into laminate, and you can make pens out of that. That is the extremely short version of what micarta is. And used for all sorts of products, not just pens. It is uh, traditionally also used for, for I think, for, for um, uh, conduction, uh, electricity, not conduction, electric, whatever. It is used for things that have to do with electricity, and I'm not a physicist. Um, but it's also used in, for example, knife handles, and it's known to be a very strong material, and it has a very interesting texture. So here you have this pen, and the fun thing is, uh, Claudia had the same finish. When I saw this, I had to think of Arco. Um, now, this is not a celluloid, right? It's micata, it's different, but I think it's fun. It's a big pen. I contacted Josh, uh, Joseph sorry, over uh, through, through Instagram and said, could you make me one? He said, absolutely. Um, and it's kind of fun. So these pens with a steel number no. 6 nib uh, are 150 US, which I don't think is that bad. Larger pen, kind of fun. Um, I asked him if he could make me one with a number no. 8 Bock nib and also one with a number no. 8 Jovo nib. So he made me interchangeable sections, exactly what I wanted. You can customize things, you can put a ring on the on the cap, which is what Claudia had, and I, I did not really like that, so I wanted it without the ring. So it's all fun, You can I think you can even do it clipless, so you have some options, but you just need to discuss it. This is someone you personally interact with. It's just a pen lover, just like you and me, except he happens to make these things. And he doesn't really do it on a giant commercial basis. So, let's look at the past of the pen. Then I'll do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like about it, what I not like about it. Let's get started. Okay, let's have a look at what I have started to call the Penprike pen, because that is the name of the, uh, the Instagram account you can contact to get one made. The pattern does line up, as you can see, uh, which is kind of nice. I'll come back to some of the, the things you see here. A uh, bit of a gap there, for example. So, Joseph, super nice guy. I was chatting with him a bit through Instagram. He makes these pens, and I think he does really nice work. So, if you want a larger pen, I'll show you how much larger. Here we have a Lamy Safari. These are bigger pens, right? They're pretty big. As I said, Yovo number no. 6 nib. Steel is included for $150. Mine were more expensive because I got a number no. 8 uh, Bock nib, but I also, whoa, I also asked him to make me a section with a number no. 8 Jovo nib, which, sorry, yes, number no. 8 Jovo nib, as well as the Bock number no. 8 nib, um, which can be fun. How much fun? Quite a lot of fun. Here you have a number no. 6 nib, so you can see that these really are quite a bit bigger. I just thought it would be fun. Now, very kindly, Joseph uh, said he liked my, my videos. He only charged me for the nibs. So I cannot tell you what he would charge for this pen uh, with if he makes it for you and puts the nib in, but contact him. He's very nice and very easy to communicate with. Okay, pass the pen, right? Let's not waste any more time. I'm just, I'm just trying to make this, this pattern line up because otherwise people will complain. Here we go, pass the pen. Top of the pen, and the nice material. I really like this. Again, this is a bit Arco-like because Arco has these, these stripes too. So that's kind of cool. We have a nice clip, robust, simple, uh, stiff, but works. I'm sure you could get a clipless if you want to. Um, this side is quite nice. I really like this side. This really reminds me of, of Arco, oh, <coughs> sorry, Arco material, which has that sort of teardrop shaped uh, concentric no, well, not circle, but concentric, oblong-shaped uh, pattern in it. If you ever held Arco, you know what I mean. 
If you don't, this is the vaguest description ever. My apologies. On the sides, you have that nice stripy material again. Um, I wonder if that's the layers of, of cotton or something that get compressed by making micarta, but I'm not a micarta expert. Uh, and here you have those lines again too. You unscrew the cap um, section. I, I believe he said it was ebonite. Um, barrel, nicely sized pen, rather large. You can post it if you really want to. I, I, I wouldn't recommend it because it's it massive that way, but you, you could. Section is very simple, straight, not barrel shaped, not hourglass, just a straight cylinder. But I, I actually find it comfortable and it, it's not slippery, which is actually really nice. The number eight nib is, is big, which means you're a little farther away from the paper than with the number six nib. Um, the nice thing about these is that they have an ebonite feed, which is why I always like the, the Bok number eight nib. It's very good uh, ink flow. Pen comes with a converter. Uh, I have the feeling that this could be eyedroppered for sure, but of course there is metal threads in there, so I wouldn't recommend eyedroppering this this pen. Um, you know, simple. Okay, and if you really want to see it with the Yovo nib on there, um, that works too, right? The the actually is interesting because the Yovo is actually a bit a little shorter than the Bok nib, but it is stockier. It's it's wider shoulders. So really quite nice. Let's see how this pen writes. I will write with both nibs for your pleasure. And then we'll talk about what I like and what I don't like. What I do with my writing thing, it is right here. Okay. So. I did that because I just wanted to make sure I was waving around with it uncapped for a bit. Um, I am going to call it the pen Prike pen and not the Joseph pen because this is a unique identifier in Instagram. Uh, pen Prike pen, this is the Bok number 8 broad nib and the ink is Rohrer und Klinger Alt Gold Grün. I have to write that down because if I don't, approximately 25 questions will follow. Alt Gold Grün. Old gold green. Oh, really? Yes, really. Writing smooth. The fast writing. Nice, no real skips that I can tell. As to wetness, on the wetter side of things, rather nice. Um, it is a broad nib, seems a tiny bit stubby maybe. As always, very, very careful. Could have a little bit of line variation, but it's not a flex nib, so don't, don't overdo it. Um, and then of course, Reverse writing is actually really smooth and definitely makes the nib a bit finer and also stubbier, which is interesting. Okay, now I'm going to switch nibs. I have to cheat a little bit because I already put away the bottle of ink, so I'm going to force a little bit of ink uh, through the section in hopes of making this right. I think I did get it to right. Because I only have I had one converter and as I said I put away the, the bottle so um, so here of course it doesn't write okay oh guess I didn't put away the bottle you have to bear with me here sorry the thing is guys most of these videos I do I would say 99% are single take affairs I don't really edit a lot. What you see is what you get, and that's just the way it is. So this was a nice interruption. I'm not going to edit out. I'm just going to leave it right where it is. There we go. Okay. So here we have the Yovo number eight broad nib. Same ink, same pen, right? What's the difference? This nib, when I compare it to the Bok nib, 
I mean, it's not really a review of the two nibs, but I find just a tiny bit more feedback in the Yovo as opposed to the Bok. Not even bothering writing anymore. Not bad. Wetness, I mean, yeah, it's just inked up, right? So take that with a grain of salt, but uh, it is fairly wet. Um, and if the final thing I really wanted to, to show you, okay, there is the tiny bit careful line variation. And of course there is the reverse writing, which is much drier with the Yovo as opposed to the Bok. And there you have it. So, Joseph, really, thanks for making me this pen. I really enjoy it. Guys, let's talk about um, what I like about it and what I not like about it. Okay, so what do I think about what I've labeled the pen prike pen? There's a couple of things about this that I really like. As soon as I saw Claudia's, I, I kind of wanted one, and that, that doesn't happen to me that often when it comes to pens, oddly enough. So I was quite enthusiastic. And I think this pen has a couple of things that it, it, it really has going for it. First of all, it's a nice larger pen. And I find it relatively affordable. $150 for something that is handmade on a very small scale, not churned out by the hundreds. Uh, that's, I don't think, too bad. Uh, I like that. I like the fact that you can customize your pen. You can put another nib on if you want number 8. Joseph can make you number 8 section. Uh, you know, you can, you can pick. You can have it with a clip, you can have it without a clip, you can pick the colors, so there's a nice gray he does too and all that, so I mean, all that is, is, is simple stuff, right? Um, and it's robust. Micarta is a hard material, as I said, used in a lot of knife handles. Uh, it's, it's tough, it's a tough material, and has an interesting texture to it. Hard to describe, but it's, it's definitely a textured, it's, it's smooth, and yet you feel the texture, which is interesting. I like the fact that Joseph is a pen enthusiast and he does this and you can support him by buying his pens. It's not a major company, it's not a it is not even a website. It's it's just it's just a guy. And I like that. I like to support persons like that. Um big, robust, comfortable, customizable. What more could you wish for? Things I don't like so much. Not a lot. I think what you, given what you pay for it, you actually get a pretty nice pen. But there are a couple of things. Micarta, as I understand, can be hard to work with. Uh, and I, I think back of the, the Twisby Micarta, uh, which I, I owned years ago. And the threads got a little, I don't know, they, they get a little sort of, what do you call that? Not, not, not scum, but sort of like a like scree on them. It's like a little, little stuff. Well, I haven't had that with this pen. But what I will say is, maybe here and there it is a little coarse. Yeah, the clip is, is a very simple piece and um, you can tell that the, 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 the barrel and the cap are not aligned 100%. The cap sticks out a little bit more to, to, to this side. It's all nitpicking. In this case, I liked it. If I buy a super expensive pen, I want everything to be lined up. I want it to be perfect. I want it to be beautiful. If I buy a pen like this, it's a rugged pen. It's a micarta pen. It's not a precious resin, very special collector's piece. This is a pen for users. And uh, I'm just switching out the, the nib units because I think you can see it a little bit better with, with this uh, uh, section in for, uh, for example. So you can see there's a tiny bit of a gap. It's really not nothing huge. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm nitpicking here because I want to say something uh, that, is, that is not just gushing positivity because it is review. But, uh, I think, to me, that adds to the charm. As I said, it's a handmade pen. It's my carta. It's a tough material to work with. This is what you get. So there is that. Another thing, very interesting smell. Um, not the pen itself, I will say. There's a lot of pens. Um, I, I, I don't want to, to complain, but if you've used a noodler's pen, you know that they have a very specific smell that some people find very off-putting. This pen does not have that. You really have to smell the inside of the cap, the inside of the barrel, but 
you know, the pen itself you smell with nothing. So, uh, but but just so you know, I, I know that to some people that's a big deal, uh, but it's not the case that when you uncap this, you get this waft of, of nauseating fumes. I mean, I mean, it's it's not like that. You don't even smell it if you uncap it. You really have to stick the cap in your nose to notice it. You know, having said that, this, what's the bottom line? I think the bottom line is you get a great pen. You get an affordable pen, relatively affordable pen. I mean, 150 bucks, that's to put you in range of, say, Edison pens, but made by one guy. Nice, bigger pen, rugged. I think that's the best way to put it. A rugged pen. I can drop this right now on the floor and I know nothing will happen to it. You know, and that's kind of cool. So, there you have it. Joseph, thanks a lot for making me this pen with the sections. That's, that's really kind of you. I hope this was useful. And I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.